Welcome to a video on gardening for resilience. Here we have my herb section. It's been newly sown so you won't see a lot. But on the left here we have a butternut squash. That was from a seed from a butternut squash I bought from Asda, which I test germinated, and it germinated. Not entirely what cult sure what a cult far it is. Could be a wolfram, could be another. No idea. We're just seeing if it grows. These two pots, zoom out a bit. These two pots here have been sown with coriander. This pot has been sown with basil. This tray, da 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 da, see my out, mm. here, has been sown with dill on the left and parsley on the right. Here you have a lemon mint. There you have rosemary that may or may not recover. Here we have lavender. And here we have cumin seeds that didn't come from a seed packet, they came from a packet of cumin that we use for cooking. We're assuming that they will germinate. In this bed here, you have Brussels sprouts. Yes, I have sown well too many. The idea is to thin out and keep the best ones. Here, over this line and we have kale again sown too heavily thin out and keep the best ones here we should have cabbages they did not come up I've re-sown another row in between the two that have been a bit more heavily sown see if they germinate this time here we have Asturian tree cabbages something I'm experimenting with we shall see how they turn out. Apparently they're supposed to get up to two feet high with a big mop of leaves and they keep picking the leaves and they keep producing. Also apparently you can keep them going for a couple of years and even have leaves in the hungry gap. Uh, um, they're supposed to be a row of lettuce seedlings but again they fail so I might have to re-sow problem with gardening is that every so often you have to re sow because sometimes things don't always come up. Now here's my experimental carrot bed. It's experimental because I'm trying a few things. Last year's carrot, flaky too, planted in a ring around the carrot bed, partially to discourage carrot flies, partially to send up flower spike to collect seed for next year. Newly sown carrots, which you can just about see signs of, if I zoom in a bit. Yeah, you can just see signs of them beginning to appear. Oh, that's a weed. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, Amsterdam Forcing, which is a carrot of my preference. And they're scatter sown all over the bed and will be thinned out as needed. Also you'll notice around this bed are onion sets. Now let me zoom down here. There you go, one popping up here. The idea of planting garlic and onions all around your beds is to discourage cats. Cats hate alums. I've noticed that. Of all the beds last year that the cats went to, they never went to poo in the onion bed leek bed or the garlic bed. Those three beds the cats left alone. So far planting alums all around my other crops have prevented cats using these beds as toilets. It seemed to be working quite well. Here we have the start of beetroot. The beetroot I'm doing here is a uh, bloody bull. It's uh, um, 
purple decorative leaf with a bright scarlet bulb or tuba. Remains of last year's Chogia beetroot. See if they seed. Doesn't really matter if any kept for because I've had the rest. Here uh, soon will be butternut squash, uh, um, French beans. In this long bed is sweet corn and climbing beans being planted together to support each other. Here at the moment you've got beetroot of an unknown cultivar, seed saved from last year. Don't know if I used a pure strain or a hybrid. If it's a pure strain they'll all turn up true to type. If it's a hybrid only a quarter will turn up as the original hybrid. The other three quarters showing signs of either parent. Also planted in here are butternut, not butternut squash, um, what's that planting here? Right, let's have a look at the labels. Oh yeah, on the white, white patapan squash in an X of 10. Uh, um, in pairs, weakest one pick out. And on the left, in an X of uh, cool shirts, again pick out the weakest of each pair. Here you've got peas onward, which I seed saved last year, so this is my own seed. Here I've got the bean breeding bed. This is rather complicated. On the left hand side you've got a crimson flowering bean. On the right hand side you've got a twin row of red epicure, which is white flowering bean with a red bean. In the middle, you've got them interspersed with each other in the middle two rows, in the pairs. The idea is I'll cross them and see if eventually, after about five years of crossbreeding and backbreeding, if I will get a pinkish bean with a pink flower. It's a challenge. Here, you have perpetual spinach. Here you have my potato bowl. They're coming up quite nicely. Again in an X of five. And just keep chasing up with compost until they're at the top. Let them do their thing, let them die off. And hopefully I'll have a bowl full of spuds. Down here I've got two potato trenches averaging about nine each. They're beginning to show signs of life. Only beginning. They're supposed to be an early spot and they're taking their time. Hmm. Not so early. And that's basically what I've got planted here. So as I go through the year, I'll come back here, do more films and show you how I'm doing.